Th this film, like the fisheries exhibition it features, celebrates the centuries-old trade of fishing. The Between the Storms project, which explores the heritage of Folkestone as a port. The project has been devised and managed by Payton Pounders Community Interest Company, which is based in the Creative Court of Folkestone. It's funded by the Heritage Lottery Fund. I saw the exhibition they had in Hastings, you know, the very lovely Fisherman's uh, Museum they've got over oh, there. Yes, and, uh, and so I came away from that some time ago and I thought it'd be nice if we could have one for Folkestone. You know, Folkestone have its own one, bearing in mind we were the premier foot fishing port throughout the centuries. So uh, I said, uh, well, we've got this fisherman down here, I'll see if they're interested in getting something together. And that was about around about 2010, 2011, I suppose. And I went to see John Gale down the fish market and he grabbed my arm. He said, well, he said, we certainly want to do this. It's a wonderful idea. We can commemorate all the fishermen down here, all the fishing over the centuries and show how it took place and how we developed it and how we became the premier port for fish you know, in the area. You know, this would be the ideal thing uh, to, to do. So, um, and then I came into contact with Alan and we all got together as a little group. Well this first one, this is old Lottie Waller with her fish bar. This is outside of fish shed number one, which is now folks and trawlers fish shop and store. And uh, she was here for many years. I gather she came from a gypsy family. But I can recall one day when uh, Mr. Grayling, the official auctioneer and wholesaler, who we'll put, I'll point out to you in a minute, yeah, uh, was auctioning a lot of fish and other people were running her, she particularly wanted this lot of fish. And what Mr. Graylin did at the last knockings, before he knocked it down to somebody, he'd go back to people that had be, been bidding. And he said to Mrs. Waller, oh, did you bid, Mrs. Waller? And she said, no, you can stick the fish up your effing arse. Okay. And the place was crowded with holiday makers. <laughs> so she was quite a character then? She was. This is Bill Graylin, he's the auctioneer and he'd been in the trade all his life and he sold out to Roland Gammond in 1971. He's just learning the trade there. And this is now folks and trawlers fish store at the back of the fish shop. And so this is 1971 and look at the fish there. This chap's still around, he worked for him, David Anslow. And that's his uncle, Skinny Spearpoint. And there's close up of them weighing the fish, this oh, was yeah. Skinny, it was his nickname, Spearpoint his name, and another one all taken on the same day, and look at the fish there, cod, skate, dogfish. Now this chap here, Henry Waller, he stood the opposite end of the fish market, and he was old Lottie's son, or one of her sons, and he also bought fish at the market, and he was a retail fish sailor. This fella here, Dave Spearpoint, or Lobby is his nickname, he'd been fishing all his life and uh, I was fishing from in the mid-sixties, long lining for cod in the winter and he used to bait our lines and help keep and turn them out. And he, he's retired in this photograph, but mending a trawl. Lay the thing across the top, through there, Okay, and then, sorry, get this out here, that's over there, get it back through the hole there, and then that pulls up and you've got another one there, another mesh, and that's another one done, okay, and then you have to centre the mesh, so you push it across a bit, you get it in the centre, and that's another mesh done. The way to use an adz is, if you use it like that, I mean they're razor sharp, you hit your ankle, chop your leg off, like that. Mm -hmm. I'm left handed, but the left hand stays still, and you just move your right hand like that. That's the way to use an adz. And moving along, we've got augers, all different sizes, they would be for boring holes and um, back in the days when these would have been used, an ordinary brace, hand brace and bit, they were only short so if you wanted to drill through thick pieces of timber like I just mentioned about it for ships, you'd need something longer.
Certainly in the days of sail, they had missionary ships and they'd go out amongst the fleet in the North Sea. And um, because the fishermen be out there would be meeting foreign vessels and they'd be getting spirits from them and crews got drunk. The missionary ship was, well, they tried to preach to them and hold a service and then try and convert them, stop them from drinking and smoking. But, yeah. Which probably sometimes... I thought they out. probably got a mixed reception. Yeah, <laughs> could be violent sometimes, I think, yeah. This, this no, one was the Countess of Radnor, was actually built up in Canterbury Road where the railway club is today, and fetched down here on a horse and cart. And we're looking at a picture of a horse Pulling dragging a boat trailer. down past, yeah. past the ice rink, down yeah. towards the harbour. And on the right there is now Gillespie's, what used to be the London Paris. Mm -hmm. This one here is after the rescue of the pleasure boat of Josephine. That's my grandfather, tall man, six foot odd like myself. This is my great grandfather. He lived to a great old age. He died in 1940. He fished all his life. They have some great nicknames, yeah, great didn't nicknames. they? Could, 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 could read a few of them from there. They're, they're great. Well, this, he was shed legs. That was my granddad. Shed legs? Shed legs, Why yeah. Why they called him that? Because he had long legs. <laughs> Black and Fag, he's another one. Muggy Hall, uh, who else have we got? Robbie Taylor, Mo Baker, is another nickname, Mo. Well, who else have we got? Lala Taylor, another one. Lala, is that, they Lala. still have a fish stall. There's yep. a fish stall well, called yeah, Lala. Yeah, yeah long the yeah. there, yeah. It's named after him, is it? Yep, there's a whole list of them here. Yeah, I can see. There's yeah. a, some, I can see yeah. there, Long, Long Tom Tiddy. Yeah, Long Tom Tiddy, yeah, before my time. He presumably was tall. Yeah. And then there's Stumpy Saunders, who perhaps yeah. wasn't. <laughs> Arms and Legs Tiddy. Yeah. <laughs> Great name. Old Racker, Penfold. Yeah. yeah. Edmund La La Taylor. That's, that's the man you were La talking La, about. Yeah, that's yeah. La La, yeah. And this one here, Cottage Featherby. Cottage. Cottage, old cottage, yeah. And then there's Henry Splosh Harris. Old Splosh Harris, yeah. yeah well, he got his name, evidently. Yeah. They were fishing one day and they were haul hauling a catch up and the mast broke and it came down across him. Mm. And after that, he had waterworks trouble. So he, all the rest of his life, so he was forever going to have a wee, so they called him Old Splosh. <laughs> That's a little unkind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>